doesn't get cold. I want to see what's going on in here. Wow, 72 degrees. What? You know what this is? 72 degrees? That's like summertime in San Francisco. What's up guys? It's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, let's go check this out. Weber's place. Look at that big monstrosity, that red roof. It's like a bad birdhouse. It doesn't even look like a bar. It looks more like a hardware shop. So it used to be a topless bar. It looks that way, doesn't it? Guys? Damn. So let's talk about the marketplace a little. We're in Reseda. You're just over the hill. We got Sunset Boulevard with some of the best live music venues in the world. So they're trying to compete with Troubadour, you know, Whiskey, Classic, Roxy, Viper Room, all those places. Yeah, you can't compete with Troubadour. <laughs> Elton John played there. And if I recall correctly, John Taffer used to be the bar manager there as well. And it's such a big venue. Like, that's probably not a good idea to compete against them with such a small uh, venue. You. Uh, can I have extra dry martinis, straight up? Oh! You cannot scoop ice with glass. That's like a health violation. It's also a safety hazard because if you scoop the ice with glass and a small piece of that glass comes out, you can't see it. And then now you have glass shards inside the ice well. Who this band? They're not even filling the room, Michael. Okay. So the only bands you get at a venue like this are bands that don't yet have a following. Right. And this is what you get. Yeah, it seems kind of pointless to have a band that isn't going to fill the bar up. It's almost like a waste of money. And it doesn't help that the bartenders are distracted by it. That means that even though you don't care about the music, you're going to have to wait until the song is done because that's the only time the bartenders will be available. They're dancing more, not serving the customers. Yeah, they're not watching the actual guests, they're watching the band. Yep. Yeah, that's why I said the bartenders like I worked in venues before and you should not let the, the show distract you These bartenders are just way too distracted by the show and there's three of them How could it not one of them pay attention to what's happening on a bar top? You know, it's funny we were talking earlier about it being an old strip club at some point Why is the window a big pair of lips? I'm guessing it comes from those days <sighs> All right here. Yeah, if you're gonna change a strip club and turn it into a music venue, like, you gotta get rid of that decor that was there before. It doesn't make any sense. So you bought Weber's how long ago? December of 2007. So I noticed the lips. Is that from the strip club? Correct. You didn't do anything to change that? Correct. Wow. Why, why would you do nothing? Like, it doesn't look like a music venue. It still looks like a very shady strip club. People, do you think people want to go to a strip club to listen to music? One of my major problems why I'm losing a lot of money is because of my staff. I think they're stealing a lot from me. I've seen, I've seen employees uh, uh, put money in the, in the tip jar without, bring, without going into the register. They're not just stealing. He's seen this himself? That's stealing. Why isn't he firing anyone? And so what did you do when you saw it? Well, trying right now, instead of firing them, trying to train them not to be, not to be thieves. Yeah, the fact that he knows this is going on and he's just allowing it. You know, most Bar Rescue episodes, the owner doesn't know that team is stealing from them. And he doesn't know that the team is overpouring, but he knows that they're doing both, and he's doing nothing about it. I think somebody who steals today is gonna suddenly not steal tomorrow. Hire another person, I don't know what I'm gonna get. I may get another thief. So at this point, I know what I have in the house. I'm gonna try, to, I'm trying my best to fix that. So here. What kind of mentality is that? No, most bartenders are not thieves. Like, the fact that he's filled his bar staff with them means that he should get rid of all of them. There's no reason to keep, there's plenty of bartenders who are not thieves and who are honest. So let's start with refrigeration. That's our walkthrough over there. You see all that? So, oh! This we have... What is that? There's dust accumulating on the racks? Oh! Oh! Just yeah. empty container, look like old chicken blood. Now when was that? This raw chicken juice. It looks like it's gelatinized. It empty. Uh, probably a couple of days ago because I had I had chicken in there, but I took the chicken out. Listen to me. Because so why is an empty container still there? What's the purpose of just the juice lying there for? The grease is old. You see that? Contaminated grease because of the specks in there. The minute he... <sighs> it's like motor oil. It's just... Yeah, it needs to be changed. It doesn't get cold. I want to see what's going on in here. Wow, 72 degrees. What? You know what this is... 72 degrees? That's like summertime in San Francisco. What does this say? It says that you've been trained in food sanitation. You know better than this. 
So do you care or not? I care. But you How do you have a serve safe certification not know this? Most places that they have in the past on this show where the kitchen staff doesn't know what's going on, they're usually not trained. But she clearly took the classes and passed the, the food safety classes. So she should know better. All right, Mike, let's see what we got back here. I mean, look at this, just tons of crap. This is one little section of this. Look at that, filth. Oh, that's unacceptable. That's where the, all the clean glasses go. And when you have the clean glasses go to an area that's already dirty, then what's the purpose of uh, washing and cleaning them? Look at that rig. Oh! Look at that! Why is that doing in the bottom of the cooler? Is that rust? How many times did you look down there and pull a beer bottle out of it? Smiling, is this fun to you? Today is the first day that I noticed that. You know what, then maybe you need to hire somebody who can see. How do you, if John Taffer who just got here and saw that, how do you not notice a rag that's on the bottom of the, the coolers like that? It's, it shouldn't be there in the first place. It should be like, oh, what the heck? Why is there a rag inside the cooler? Because if you can't see, you can't work here. Pipe down, player. What? Dude, what is wrong with her? I said pipe down. Don't be disrespectful, homie. Screaming and talking loud. See, this is why this. There's. So you have employees not only are thieves but also rude. Like no wonder why this place is falling apart. Like there's nobody who's working there have has any respect. This is why you're losing because you got employees who have no respect. Look at me. Out of here, yo. Out of here. I am. Out of here, yo. You can't be serious. That's the. Wow, she just walked out. Like he wasn't even trying to provoke her. People like that, they're like ready to leave whenever you know the ship sinks like i don't think she wanted to change at all like she definitely knows this place is failing she definitely knows that what she has right now is very good working it with a boss that doesn't enforce any rules and she clearly doesn't want this place to change she likes it the way it is and she sees him as a threat that if this bar improves that means that she's going to be making less money like these are the type of people that you want to get rid of that's why like it baffles me that he wanted the, the owner wants to keep all of these people when we come in here in the morning this place is spotless Make it so you're proud of it. Yes, sir. John leaves the bartenders to clean, and server Layla chooses to help out. I've always wanted to be a bartender. I'm kind of hoping to kind of, you know, prove my worth here today. See, that's a keeper. You know, you have employees like that who wants to work their way up through, like, honest, hard work. And now that there's an opening uh, for her, they should really consider giving her a chance. When I look at your beverage cost, it infuriates me. Let me show you what I mean. This was what happened on Thursday night of this week. Your staff gave away $435 worth of liquor. Wow. It's crazy how these bars, they give away so much liquor on these slow shifts. Like, that can't be an accident. On Friday night, they gave away $715 worth of liquor. Wow. Over the course of two days, Weber's lost $1,150 in liquor sales. He lost $1,100 in just two days. And these are just the two days that, you know, John Taffer looked at. Like, who knows how many, how long this has been going on. It could be for years. And how much liquor did they give away? Friday night, $715. But Mario, Friday night, what happened? What happened to my money? That was just shit. Probably over poured. Probably gave a shot away. Probably? I over poured. You over poured. How many shots have they given away without asking? 100? Maybe. 100 is probably conservative. Like, if you consider a shot is like seven, you know, seven dollars, that would be 100 shots. 100 shots. No, that he's definitely was giving away free drinks. And $700, there's no way that this is a little extra half an ounce here and there. Watch the way you answer this question, because I know more than you think I do. What if I said some of his money wound up in your pocket? Now's the kind to come straight. Did it? Probably. So you're a thief? There he is. Oh, I didn't realize that there were cameras around that he installed. Wow, so it wasn't just over pouring, but it's just stealing the till. That's the guy who steals money, counts it at night, as low as it gets. This can happen again. I'm gonna keep you here, but this can happen again. Let me ask you a question. What would you do, Joe? I'd probably break his yeah. and then fire, fire him. What would you do if it was your business? I'd, I'd fire him. What would you do if it was your business? He would be out. What are you gonna do? This is your business. You're gonna let all your employees think that you're the softest one in the room? 
The guy's been stealing for him. I mean, he's been there for four years. Can you imagine how much trust that is that's built? And despite that, he steals from him. Mario's done. Immediately, right now. Get the out of my place. Well, I guess I was, I guess I was wrong. He pulled the trigger, as he should. Cosmo? Okay, sure. Exactly. What kind of glass does a Cosmo have? Uh, it typically comes in a highball, right? But Cosmo does not- the Cosmo does not come in a highball. It comes in a martini glass. Oh my god, how does he not know what a Cosmo is? Or at least a glassware. What next, he doesn't know what color it's supposed to be? We are, we are out of pour, uh, pour spout, so... Plus, stop. Okay, stop. We're out of pour spout. So there's one right in front of you. Oh, would you take it off and rinse it off with a soda gun? <laughs> not only that, you still have jiggers. Tyler doesn't know his basic stuff. He would fail at bartending school. Hey, I'm really sorry about this. Sorry. Oh, that drink looks yeah. way too red. Probably too much cranberry juice. Or maybe he even used the maraschino cherry juice because that looks really, really red. I need a second. Can you have this table ready, please? That glass is that. Can you enter two cheese, two cheese burgers, please? The two guys over there, they need some help. Can I get you something? Yeah. Uh, Three shots of tequila. <laughs> okay. Were you guys taking care of already? Yes. yes right, thank you very much. Great to see Kervin engage with his staff, but he's overdoing it. He's riding Layla too much, and she's getting extremely frustrated. He's not going to be an effective manager that way. It also doesn't make it look... It doesn't make you look good when the server has the manager just following her around. It's going to make the guest feel nervous, too. Every single order, Van had to go, like, on a hike. Ouch. And when you're working in a kitchen... Wait, is she bringing the frying basket into the walk-in to put the chicken in there? Like, why not just bring the raw chicken out? Look at this. What is this? It's a sampler platter. I mean, look at that. Look at how that looks, chef. How is that? Yeah, the, the temperature of the oil, especially when you overuse it too much, drops. And then when you're putting the next item in, the oil is is too cold. So there's a good chance that a lot of that food, especially the chicken, is not going to be cooked inside. So it looks like she has multiple uh, frying stations. In order for her to not have this happen, she needs to know how to rotate which fryers she's going to use. Keith, make sure those are cooked, would you? Are they? I knew it. It's raw. Oh! That doesn't even look like it's been in the fryer for like more than a minute. You could tell it's not cooked from the outside. Raw chicken is gonna put us out of business. Stop it, rushing me. It's frustrating. Stop We're rushing. It's called time management. Frying is probably one of the fastest ways you can cook something. How come you didn't garnish those? Did you put a lemon or lime on those? No, actually, we, we don't have another station. You don't um, have another station? We only have two of them. So next time, you know what you do? All you have to do is you put fruit garnishes and you set them up in, in glassware. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to leave all the fruit in one station. Just grab a few and put it into a cup. And now you have two stations that have citrus. Am I missing them to go in it? Vodka vermouth uh, with a little bit of that juice and um, the olive oil. Michael. How does the server know how to make a martini but the bartender doesn't? Back here. Layla, I want you back here. I need your help. This staff lacks competency. They're just not good bartenders. So I wanted to see how Layla would do. What are you making? I'm making two dirty martinis. Okay, she's getting behind the bar. That's insane. She's been a server this whole time, and she's like the only one who knows what goes in basic cocktails. What kind of martini? Do you want vodka or gin? She's learning, but she knows how to apply what she's hearing. She's a good student, guys, that we don't have the mozzarella sticks. Tell them where this is going. The stress test was a disaster. It was a disorganized mess. I have to start from square one, and only... Damn, the... The kitchen has no experience. I mean, she probably has some experience, but she has no, she doesn't have that much experience multitasking or setting up her station, especially when she's running with the frying basket into the walk-in to retrieve raw chicken to fry. And you have the bartenders having less bartending experience than the servers. I know that this bar has a theft problem. So we're gonna go in a liquor room where it starts. Here's what they'll do, guys. They'll take that bottle, they'll fill it half with water. Son yes, and now you think you got a full bottle there. I've Meanwhile, what did they do? They took that liquor to the bar and sold it. So they bring 20 ounces to the bar, they can keep 20 ounces worth of sales and it doesn't even show in that report. That is very, very elaborate. I've never heard of anyone doing that. What I'm doing is like, my time, yeah, sure. please, that would be great. Go ahead. So, one, 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 one thousand, oh. that's way over okay. right now. Oh, way that's too much. Okay. okay. Is this shaking? Is this... Okay, get it in the drink, get it in the drink. There we go. Tyler, his bartending skills are poor at this point. They're just piss poor. Good, perfect. Blue carousel, two ounces of pineapple. Shake it up. There you go. 
fast, beautiful. Perfect pour. I would have never guessed you just started bartending. That's really, really great stuff. Why did they not ever promote her? She's like been a server this whole time and she's like out bartending everyone else. You guys ready to see it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, they kept a name. Come on, Tyler. It's not a science project, bro. It's bartending. Get in there. Go faster. The doors opened up tonight. The bar collapsed. I mean, Tyler's a few pineapple daiquiris, right? This guy should not be behind the bar. Not At least not on the busier shifts. So Tyler just can't do this. He cannot do the simplest of things. He's just not made to be a bartender. I'm pulling him the hell out of there. I think making the new cocktails has proven too much for Tyler to handle. But new bartender Layla is thriving. Tonight was such a rush. It was really intense, and I just tried to utilize as much of the tools that Mike gave me as I could to do my best and work fast. Dude, she looks like she's improved the most. Like, she went from a server to a bartender almost seamlessly, and not just a bartender. She looks like she's the fastest bartender compared to anyone else that's currently there. Knowledge that you taught me, I mean, that definitely boosts my confidence. It's all up to Kervin. We'll see what he does. What? Why? Why? What? He hired, rehired that thief? Why would he do that? Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave in the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.